all the time. And evidently he thought about it all the time. He was te- teaching people about it. You know, it says in, in, in Matthew 23, verse 14, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. And he's, he's on and on about hell here. Okay? He's just going off and telling these stupid Pharisees, these hypocrites, these Judaizers, these legalists, these, you know, work salvationists, lordship salvationists, he's telling them you're going to go to hell if you don't, you know, basically if you don't get saved. And it's sad that people end up going to this place, but see, nobody has to go to hell, and I'm going to explain how to be saved at the end here. If people should know how to be saved, if they've been to my channel more than once, they should know, because it's very clear how to be saved. And I make, it, I make it clear pretty much in every sermon. So I'm going to explain it again, because I know people out there that are lost and pathetic. And the thing is, nobody has to stay lost. Everyone is lost when they're born. They're lost. They're born to this world unsaved. But see, when you believe on Christ, you're saved forever. You know? You don't have to stay lost, is what I'm saying. You're, you know, nobody has to stay lost. That's why when a, when a person goes to hell, it's their own fault for willfully rejecting the cross of Christ, the Jesus, the grace of God, the gospel. They rejected the Bible. They rejected God's word. They rejected it all. And they, they just chose to go there. It's pathetic. It's stupid. But yet, people do choose this. So let's turn to Revelation. Let's just see how bad hell is. I've already made it. It's as bad as it is. Yeah, I can't put... Everlasting torment. Everlasting destruction. Everlasting punishment. Good night. It's not, there's nothing figurative about it, it's literal, it's literal. but we're going to see what the Bible says about this, it gets, it gets worse, I can't hear you. <sighs> and I just think people need to wake up, and stop pretending like there's no hell, stop trying to water it down, stop acting like it's not really going to be that bad, it's going to be, you know, people can get out of there a lot below any garbage, okay, it's not true, and the Bible is clear on that, and there's no watering it down, and it's not going to be that hot, who's one guy was saying, I don't think it's going to be that bad, and then I see the guy's pathetic. I, the guy, and he's ridiculous what this guy said. He said it wasn't going to be that bad because, and he didn't even believe that you you, you, you were tormented there forever anyway. And the guy was way off on that. He believed in purgatory and all this other weird stuff. But go figure. When a, when a person wants to reject one biblical truth, they're going to keep rejecting multiple truths. And they're going to come up with every false doctrine under the sun. And it's pathetic. So we need to get the wishful thinking out of our mind and stop, stop, stop lying to ourselves and telling ourselves it's not going to be that bad. It's going to be that bad. It's going to be worse than, than, you, than you can imagine. And I can't even put words to it. That's why I just encourage people to go out and win souls, tell people how to be saved, and take it seriously. Okay? He that winneth souls is wise. Okay? Preach the gospel to every creature. That's what the Bible teaches. Okay, now, here's why. We should take Revelation 14. Let's take a look at it. Verse 6, the good news. Let's go into the good news first. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. That's the good news. That the everlasting gospel is going to be preached. Okay, the gospel is Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried, and then he rose again. He did that. He went to hell. He did go to hell for three days. And the Bible teaches that in Acts. And, you know, he went there to, to take our punishment. And I don't care what people say. He, he rose again on the third day, and then he came back to earth, and then he taught, you know, kept teaching, kept preaching, evangelizing, and then he ascended back up to heaven. The tra- you know, the transfiguration or whatever. You know, and then the ascension. And I'm not, I'm not going to get into the order of all of it. My point is, Jesus Christ did this to keep us from hell. He died so we would not have to go there. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's why he died. So that we would not have to go there. He did that for us. And that's why the, the crucifixion and the sufferance was, was, was so intense. It's so extreme. Because look, at, look what you're being saved from. You're being saved from damnation in the lake of fire, hellfire burning, brimstone. So that's why the crucifixion had to be that, you know, insufferable and, and, and horrible. Because it, because it was saving us from a horrible place. So the good news is that the everlasting gospel is, gonna, is being preached. And I'm going to go over the gospel at the very end, make it very clear how to be saved. I've already made it clear. Just believe on Jesus Christ and you're saved. 
But for some people, that's not, and they got to hear it. They got to hear that again because they don't get it, or they just don't believe it, or whatever. They got a problem. But my point is, let's just keep reading. Saying with a loud voice, "Fear God, and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters." And there followed another angel, saying, "Babylon is fallen, is fallen, 